Welcome back to the channel. My name is Corey with Camping Kids, and I'm here today with my two sons. Maximus, Micaias. And we wanted to give you guys a video about our current travel trailer that we, that we are using. It is the Cougar Half Ton. It's the 30 BHS model. Uh, so we want to do a little quick list of the pros and the cons uh, after using this trailer. We've owned it for about seven to eight months now, uh, taking it out a handful of times and plan to continue to use it. Um, but let's get started. So some of the pros that we like about this trailer uh, is, is the layout. We love the layout. Uh, we are a family of six. Uh, four kids and me and my wife and so we love the layout the open space we love the idea of the bunkhouse in the back um, followed by just the open floor plan um, we love how the bathroom has a ton of space for us as well um, we came from a, a different trailer brand before this one where the bathroom was still okay but it was a little tight and we love that this bathroom is a lot more open uh, gives us a little bit more flexibility and space with that. Um, the other thing which we enjoy is the fact that this came with a solar uh, setup. So we have two solar panels, two 200 watt solar panels on the roof, followed by a solar charge controller, and then uh, I added some batteries to it as well. So that's been very convenient. Uh, on our last trailer, I actually installed a solar setup on it. Um, but this one came with it, and so far it's it's been okay. There are a few hiccups, which I'll talk about here in a moment, um, but so far it's been uh, not too bad. Uh, it also comes with an inverter. I want to say it's a 2,000 watt inverter, so we do have some 110 that uh, we have available in the trailer as well, and that's been convenient, although we don't use it as much because it does have some uh, USB ports and different things which seem to fit a lot of our needs. But we do plan on uh, utilizing the 110 a little bit more as well. Moving on to the next thing. Uh, this trailer has a decent amount of storage. We have uh, the underbelly storage up front. And then we also have some compartments in the rear. And then we also have some storage underneath the seats. And also just throughout... Uh, as you'd find typically in a trailer in the closet space and in different areas that way. So um, as a kind of a larger family, we definitely want to make sure that we can take the things that we want to take camping with us. And so the storage space has been uh, something that we've really enjoyed as well. Um, next thing is that's come in handy is the outdoor shower. We actually have an outdoor shower as well as kind of an outdoor hose area if you will um, both of them have the hot water uh, option available as well and this has come in handy especially when we go camping and as you guys know if you have any children that camp with you they tend to get pretty dirty and so the last time we went camping it was a very sandy area and we didn't want all of the sand uh, throughout our plumbing system and into the trailer so we were able to basically wash them off uh, prior to uh, getting them ready for bed. So that was very convenient and nice as well. Uh, the, the next item is the auto leveling kit that we have uh, on this trailer. So our previous trailer did not have an auto level. Uh, it had some auto stabilization uh, jacks, but we didn't have the auto level feature. So um, I have a love hate with it. I love it because it's very convenient and easy. Uh, knocking on wood, we haven't had a problem with it yet, but uh, my concern is that since it is electronic, that uh, if, if and when it ever uh, malfunctions or needs uh, some sort of uh, extra love, that it might be something that's going to be a problem. So knocking on wood that we're still able to use that uh, just fine and it's working well so far. Um, the other thing, which is our in-command system, so this trailer is equipped with the in-command uh, system where you can basically use an app to control a lot of the functionality of the trailer. 
Um, again, kind of have a love and hate relationship with that because, uh, again, it's it's relying solely on you know technology and, and the electronic side of that to control the functionality of the trailer. Um, but the convenience of that also is, is very nice if you're um, outside of the trailer and need to open the slide up or adjust the awning or if you're in bed and you forgot to turn you know the pump off or whatever that that you might need to take a, an advantage of you can always do that just on your phone and it's very convenient and easy to to use as well um, our next thing is that this trailer did come with the larger propane tanks so we do have a dual 30 uh, pound set up here which is nice uh, gives us plenty of longevity when we're out boondocking to be able to heat the trailer if needed as well as doing any cooking um, those are about the only two things that require the lp gas as our fridge is a 12 volt fridge um, which runs off just the battery power there so that's been very handy as well the next thing that is a, a benefit is the hitch uh, in the back. We haven't utilized it yet, but we plan on uh, putting maybe like a bike rack or something there. It's not suitable for towing behind the uh, trailer. Uh, it's not recommended for that. It's more recommended for uh, maybe some cargo or, or different things there if you want to put a generator or something like that in the back or um, some bikes or you know kayaks or just different things of that nature. I think it's rated uh, for about 300 pounds or so. So not too much weight, but just enough that you can utilize that and be able to uh, have fun with that. So moving on, we want to talk about some of the cons that we've experienced with this trailer. And first and foremost, uh, we drove out of state to pick up this trailer. Uh, there was another trailer um, in state that was actually relatively close to where we live. However, the configuration was just slightly different and for that different co configuration, they wanted a lot more in price. And so we actually drove uh, out of state to pick this up. So when we got there, um, things went well in terms of dealing with the dealership for the most part. Um, but moving on to the cons, when we brought the trailer home, it was still winterized. So we were anxious to use it. So we went to dewinterize the trailer and that's where we noticed the first problem that we ran into. And that was going to be a kinked water supply line coming from the freshwater tank up to our pump. And so as you can see, the freshwater tank uh, sits slightly behind where the pump is located in the RV. And for some reason, the manufacturer ran a 90 degree elbow towards the rear of the trailer and then expected the supply line to then bend backwards towards the front of the trailer to be able to reach the area that it needed to uh, to supply water to the pump. So we quickly realized that the pump was acting strange. It just would never shut off. It never seemed like it would prime very well. And so after finding that problem, uh, I did contact the, the dealership, the network of dealerships, and since we wanted to use the trailer uh, pretty much within a day or two of purchasing it, we were basically stuck. And the dealership obviously was out a couple of weeks and they recommended maybe getting in touch with uh, a mobile R RV repairman, which I did reach out to a few of those. And they basically told me that they could swing by and just essentially cut a hole in the underbelly and, and kind of see what the problem was. And so with me being uh, fairly handy and having experience in the construction industry for quite some time, I decided, well, if they're going to just cut a hole in the underbelly, this is a brand new trailer. I don't really want that to happen. So I basically uh, took on the repair myself and come to find out uh, the line was kinked. So we replaced that with um, a solid brass uh, elbow as well as being able to replumb the entire supply line using PEX and making sure that it was a straight shot as best as possible and ever since then the pump's been working great um, but kind of a, a little bit of a disappointment there especially since the water is essentially one of the main functionalities of owning a travel trailer and it's pretty important to being able to enjoy it. Um, moving on, the next 
uh, problem that we had was the solar panels and essentially there was a fuse that to this day I'm not fully sure why they wired it this way but there's essentially a fuse in the what they call the giggy box or the power distribution box for this trailer and for some odd reason it kept just blowing the fuse. I've seen other uh, YouTube videos where they've also ran into this same problem with this exact same trailer so uh, heads up to Keystone if you ever come across any of these videos you might want to reconsider why you guys are wiring the uh, solar charge cables uh, up this way because once I realized what was happening um, from my previous experience installing solar systems I was able to essentially bypass that fuse and uh, wire it directly to the battery which is pretty much the recommended way from everything that I've seen and from my experience in, in the past and since doing so we've never had an issue but prior to rewiring it we changed probably five or six fuses over the course of the ownership of this trailer and there was no rhyme or reason as to why they were actually blowing or having problems so not sure what's going on there 100 percent, but i did rewire it in a way that has been working flawlessly since and so for now we'll kind of keep it that way moving on uh the other item that was a little disappointing is we came back from a trip and we noticed that the fridge was not screwed in at all into the cavity so the fridge was actually falling out of the cavity uh, and so that was a little disappointing. It just kind of added to the fact that a lot of things got overlooked uh, in the process of this trailer, not only by the manufacturer, but also the dealership. It seemed like their technicians uh, maybe didn't go through it as, as well as they should have with, with certain things. Um, so that was another disappointment. So again, we took that upon ourselves to secure the fridge into the cavity to make sure that it actually had the proper, uh, it was properly secured, I guess you could say. Um, the other thing that's just kind of uh, disappointing as well is on the journey home from picking up the trailer, uh, the light cap on the top uh, basically came off. And so as we stopped, to refuel and, and take a break from our journey in picking up the trailer, we noticed that uh, there was something kind of flapping on the roof and we looked up and, and the uh, light had been disconnected essentially from where it was supposed to be. So not a huge thing and not really a way to, to know if that was gonna happen or not. But again, just starts to make you wonder like how well the trailer was put together when you start having a lot of little issues like that. Uh, in my experience in the building industry over the years, it, kind of as a, as a sign that you're cutting corners maybe, you're, you're doing things too quickly and so kind of uh, just didn't give you the best feeling about the quality of the, of the RV. Um, moving on, we have some other things that uh, were kind of some negatives as well. One, the, the main cabin doors as well as the screen doors were off. Um, I had to adjust them. They weren't, the, the one that leads into the master bedroom wouldn't even latch. Uh, it was just missing the catch because the doors were installed in such a way that they didn't uh, kind of align the middle section with the door opening. It was actually kind of stretched a little wide and so, um, a lot of adjustment was needed there and still dealing with a lot of problems on the uh, the main door into the RV. Um, so again, just kind of cutting corners, just not taking their time, uh, really installing that properly in my opinion. Um, another con is that this RV did not come with batteries at all. Um, and I know that a lot of RV shops say they come with batteries and, and they're actually charging you, you know, just maybe uh, in the price. Um, but you know, it's one of those things you're paying upwards of, you know, 50 plus thousand dollars for one of these travel trailers nowadays. Um, and they can't even throw in, you know, a couple of batteries. So again, not really a huge thing, but just one of those things that's, you know, it's kind of essential to the functionality of the RV and it'd be nice to be able to have that, uh, without having, um, to go out and do that. But I was able to purchase some lithium ion batteries 
and so far those have been working well um, so we're pretty happy with those another thing that's kind of odd with the in command system here that we're not sure if we like or don't like um, is the, the ability to not be too selective in the lights for example when you hit the interior lights it basically turns on all of the lights which is great um, but sometimes you don't always want all of the lights on you maybe want to segregate that lighting um, and maybe choose just a, a few of them or maybe you know change it up so you're not using as much energy so that's something that uh, is again it's, it's convenient because it does light up the trailer and it's kind of a one one button press but also uh, not as convenient when you're out boondocking and want to conserve some of that power um, and the other thing which is very minor as well, but just kind of to reiterate some of the uh, cutting corners methodology that we feel like happened with this travel trailer is uh, there's a plug missing uh, in the toilet area. And so again, nothing too major and I'm sure that I can find another plug to, to do that. But just another thing that makes it to where you're kind of second guessing just the overall craftsmanship of the RV. I do want to put a disclaimer that this was a COVID uh, purchase, essentially. We bought this at the tail end of 2022. And so, you know, there's been a lot of talk about RVs and just the problems that they've had throughout that COVID period and just the quality and the workmanship and just the lack of uh, workers and different people to be able to, uh, you know, get the, the quality that's needed. So... Um, I do understand that that's probably a, a big portion of the things that we're experiencing with this travel trailer. Um, however, if it's one of those things where you're putting your name behind it and you want that quality to remain, and I feel like that's still important regardless of the circumstances to make sure that things are, are being done properly. So uh, anyway, we appreciate you spending the time with us today on our review here. Uh, go ahead and leave a comment below. If you also have this travel trailer, if there's been any uh, pros or cons that you've experienced with it. Um, and then also let us know kind of what else you guys would like to see from us. Uh, if you'd like to keep in touch with us and, and stay up to date, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the uh, notifications there. So you can be notified of any uh, new videos that we put out and we appreciate it. And we'll talk to you guys soon.